Hey guys, it's Vince. Today in this video, we are taking a look at a client of mine. His name is Brad. This is his new plasma system. I'm getting lots and lots of questions on plasma systems. And with good reason, I've said this in many of my videos that plasmas, without a doubt, generate the most income for those of you that are building functional parts. If you're a fabricator that's working with, you know, steels, aluminums, anything dealing with, once again, functional parts in automotive, ATV industry, marine industry, aviation industry, these systems will generate the most income once they get in your hands and, of course, you understand the software using it. That being said, uh, let's just cover real quick the system. Um, actually, Brad's system does have my Master Edition enclosure. Of course, Master Edition enclosure for those guys just getting involved with uh, looking at my systems. It includes all of the ports that the G540 integrated driver supports. So he's got the option to use four three pin GX16 connectors here. You can see the GX16. These are the dust covers. These are not wired yet. These two on this side are. And this uh, actual top port is for his relay to control his torch. And once again, underneath that, we've got the five pin connector, which is for his Proma THC. Now for his applications, he wanted the THC. Um, some of you may require a THC, some of you may not. That's why when you purchase a plasma from me, I always do a consultation with my clients to find out about what you're actually working with for your applications and we can decide whether it's an investment that you need right away or it's something you may want to add down the line. Now that's the beauty of using the Master Edition Enclosure is that all of the ports are already added. So just like you have here <clears throat> with the GX16 3 pins, if he wants to add a touch off sensor switch or limit switches or home switches, the ports are already in. So all he would have to do is wire the box for these ports to whatever inputs he wants on the 540 and he's set to go. Now, where things get interesting is when we look at the controller as far as setup and wiring. And why I say that plasmas are a different animal. We are dealing with a unit that generates a lot of EMI, literally like a nuclear explosion if you could actually see it around the chassis. That's why you can see we've got a ground bus already allocated. He's got his shield drains. Uh, these are the shield drain actual leads coming from the GX16s, one from the 5 pin, one from the 3 pin. The chassis does have full continuity as far as for grounding because once the power supply's ground is attached, it grounds the entire chassis, so that's all taken care of. We can see our relay here for firing his torch. And then, of course, we have all of the integrated servicing graphics, which I do in-house. And you can see even the text is correlated to the actual color of leads being used. So you can see here the relay is an exact picture of the relay. So if he has to service the system, again, everything has been covered to make it as easy as possible. Where I think these systems really shine, I've seen a lot of guys developing plasmas lately. They understand that there's a lot of potential in this market. What they usually do, though, is they drop the ball when it comes to understanding the accessories to support things like the Proma THC. Now I'm going to do a video on this separately uh, to explain lots of the variables that the Proma actually works with because again there are certain connections here you can see you've got up, arc, down, com. This connection here, com, is the one I always get asked about. Where does that go? Com here actually goes to V negative on your power supply. And then, of course, the unit itself takes between 7 to 35 volts, in which case, on my systems, I use 24 volts because that gives, uh, obviously, the most stable platform for power to this unit. Now, the biggest misconception is these units you see mounted all over the place. You see them inside boxes and all over the place on the chassis. This unit is only to be mounted optimally to the base of the plasma system you're using so that it can detect voltage swings which actually trigger the relays up and down to actually make that torch go up and down uh, to the substrate's curvature it needs to be mounted to the base of the plasma system you're using that is one of the biggest misconceptions okay you can see on the back of the unit you can see this space is actually made for din rail mounting and you can see how this actually slides out and then it locks it locks into position so that it would actually lock the unit in. 
So again, I'll do a separate video on the wiring on this because I have an entire diagram for it. Very, very simple unit. It has two relays, one that makes the torch go up, one that makes the torch go down, once again, based on the voltage from the torch height. So very simple device. Once again, to make sure all bases were covered, and I don't discuss this enough, this is a custom built 18-4 double shielded cable, which is properly ground drained at the female plug because once it plugs into the back of the system here at the port, okay, once this, this female plug plugs into this port, that's where the ground bus dissipates any EMI from the shield drain. Now, if you look at this cable, you can see the rules were used and these are soldered and crimped on. So you can see the solder on the ends and you can see the flux being used because when you use flux, you can see that beautiful chrome finish on the tips. These just literally plug into his Proma. So he would just come in here and you can see I don't even do anything. It just lines right up. Boom, done. Okay, so it's a very, very simple setup. And then you say, well, I see your leads are actually colored. How would you actually plug this in? Well, the beauty of this this controller and doing the graphics for servicing is all he has to do is refer to the servicing graphics on the controller it tells you everything right down to setting up Mach 3 for the relay right down to what leads and again you can see the colors of the text represent the color lead that is to be plugged into the Proma right down to the actual visual representation of the Proma and the torch so you're all set with that the other thing is that the torch lead and this is another question I get asked. It's a GX16 three pin, because again, we have the normally open and the comm connection to the relay to actually cycle the torch on and off. And the third pin is for the shield drain. So once again, just like our torch cable, once this plugs into the rear of the enclosure here, in this three pin connection, you then have the shield drain attached to the ground bus, which is properly dissipating EMI from this cable. This is a double shielded cable as well. Now the thing to keep in mind guys, all of these double shielded cables that you see, I custom built. This is double wall heat shrink here with adhesive. This is literally a polymer plastic when it's done. Okay, so this is a very durable cable. It goes now 26 feet and this is for his Proma. So when he mounts the Proma to his actual plasma's base, he just runs the cable and plugs this plugs the uh, ferrules into his Proma that's mounted at his plasma's base and runs the female connector all the way to the enclosure. And that is the proper installation for your THC. Once again, torch cable does the same principle. All you do is plug the cable in. And once the cable's plugged in, he'll run this. And you can see this is not actually terminated because he has to connect his torch to this end of the actual cable. And once he plugs this in, it will simply close the circuit. It uses a dry contact circuit on his relay, meaning it does not supply any voltage or amperage. All it does is close the circuit. And when it closes the circuit, this relay, you'll hear that click, you'll notice that that will fire the torch. That's what actually inside of Mach 3, Mach 4, uh, UCC and C, whatever most control software you're using, will actually trigger your torch. So the other thing I did, and I'm hoping she can get this, I'll just turn the enclosure is of course I'm a very big fan of my ferrites. So his GX16 5 pin is using a large ferrite there to filter all of his leads going to the 540. Now on plasma systems I use 18 gauge on any lead going to the 540 for an input. Now on, on the um, actual relay I use 20 gauge over here for the signal because it does not matter. It's, there's no voltage, there is nothing going on with this unit at all other than once again closing the actual circuit. You will see ferrite um, or excuse me, you will see ferrites here on the actual lead coming in from the 540's input, which is triggering the relay because we want that signal to be as clean as possible. The red lead symbolizes the power going to the relay. It's 48 volt and everything else is done. So again, I hope that you understand the gravity of what you're looking at because I get asked about these a lot and I get asked, you know, why are they so expensive? Well, everything you see here from the Proma to the cables to the system, everything including the servicing graphics I do in-house okay and everything is built custom based on my clients actual needs there is no there's no turnkey package that I just generate and say it's standard there's no way I can do that 
So again, I hope that the video has been helpful just for pricing to give you an idea on this. Um, base systems in this configuration start start at 2300 using a parallel port. If you need more motor cables, now stock motor cables come with this in terms of one for each axis. If you need, in this particular client's case, he has a larger table, he's a five by 10. Therefore, he's gonna need double motor cables to attach the two together to make an extension cable, one giant cable, and he'd be set. Unless you decide, and I have clients do this too, and they'll say, hey, Vin, I'll just buy the cable from you and I'll build my own solid uh, single motor cables in a single run. You can definitely do that. You know, I'll work with you any way I can. The main thing is, is that you have a very stable, properly built system. And that, to me, means more than anything because, as I've explained to Brad and we've talked for some time and uh, my other clients, looking at systems like this, there is no room for error. You don't want to have to go back and rebuild because you forgot to use double shielded cable or you forgot to properly ground the chassis. We don't want to do that. Once he plugs that IEC power cord in, this chassis is fully grounded. The power supply is grounded, the ground bus is grounded, everything. And that must be that way to properly dissipate EMI because plasma systems generate tons of it due to the amount of amperage that they draw. Once we get the system stable, the money will follow, pending, of course, you know how to use the software. So again, I hope the video has been helpful. I thank you all for your support.